I am Dr. Janino, Janina, sorry, Warren, uh, that's my name. I am the program leader and the senior lecturer in VA Advertising, PR and Branding, which uh, hopefully is the right room for all of you to be here in. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit today about self-branding to stand out. And now it doesn't actually really matter what kind of industry you want to work in or whether you want to work in advertising PR and branding or maybe you want to work in social media digital or even anything creative um, pretty much everything these days requires people to kind of think of themselves as brands so I thought that this would be a good session for me to give you a taste of the kinds of things that you would be studying at Middlesex if you were to join us in the BA advertising PR branding and um, but also even if you don't join us, this will be just useful information for you um, to think about as you embark on your career, whatever that career might be, uh, because this is knowledge that everybody needs. And I often um, refer to the knowledge around advertising, PR and branding kind of as a superpower, because the reality is, is that this day, in this day and age, everything in the world, everything from Doctors, lawyers, accountants, celebrities, actors, authors, musicians, um, big brands, you know, like big Coca-Cola and Nike and Starbucks to small brands like a brand new, uh, you know, ethical consumer fashion shop or a new clothing brand. Um, everything needs advertising, PR and branding. It, that's the way we communicate in the world. And, um, and, ev and because everything is online, everything requires some sort of online presence. And in order to really maximize on how to do that, you really need to know how to self brand. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about today. And hopefully you'll find that information to be very useful for you. And hopefully you'll also get a taste of what it might be like to kind of study the kinds of things that we talk about a lot at Middlesex. So a little bit about me, you can probably guess I don't have a British accent. I'm actually from Canada, uh, Toronto. And I've been in the UK for almost 10 years and I've been at Middlesex for six years. And I worked for 20 years in various marketing, advertising, PR roles in Toronto, including managing all of the major international PR campaigns for the city of Toronto, writing speeches for the mayor and promoting major festivals and events, working with celebrities and, and actors and, and musicians, et cetera, to put on big giant concerts and events. And I would do all of the PR and advertising for those. Um, but I have a, a PhD in place branding, so I'm particularly interested in how cities and countries actually use these tools to stand out in the competition. What makes the London story different than the Paris story or the Tokyo story for that, for, for instance, and that's the kind of stuff that I write about and I study. So I come from a broad range of experience in industry and uh, as well as academics, and um, I've been program leader for three years, and I'm really proud of the program that we offer at Middlesex because it is uh, very much geared towards making sure that young people are armed and equipped with the skills that they need to be able to survive and in fact thrive in any industry that they choose. Um, but they could move on to work in advertising and PR agencies or working for major brands or working in any industry in a promotional capacity, as well as potentially working for themselves. So uh, we certainly offer a lot of entrepreneurial pathways if you see yourself as someone who wants to maybe start a brand or um, start a company of your own, then we will also help you with that. So that's kind of what I want to talk about today is this, this idea that, you know, as you embark on your career and in, into industry, there's a lot of things you really want to start thinking about in terms of how to stand out from the competition and how to kind of create a brand for yourself that's really going to help you uh, be as successful as you can. So I just want to start by kind of saying that, you know, we know that the economy has changed, the world has changed. And for young people like yourselves, who are going to be working in any kind of creative or cultural capacity, um, you know, whether you see yourself in the cultural industries, working in, the, in sort of creative design, advertising, working in PR, working for brands, working for yourselves, the reality is that the, the idea that you're going to get one job and stay in that job, that, that idea is dead. 
that doesn't exist anymore. Um, they're saying that basically young people of your age today that are gonna be working in industry will probably have up to 14 to 20 different careers over the course of your lifetime. And what that means is that employment is now very fluid, right? It's we expect people to go from one job to another, maybe 18 months, two years in one job, maybe one year in the next job, six months in the next job. We also expect that uh, young people will have what's called portfolio or boundaryless careers, where you'll be working on a project over here with some business partners, and then you could actually do some freelance projects over there. And then maybe you go two days a week into a different company and do some work there. And so that there's a lot of sort of um, uh, very fluid kind of moving and changing ways in, in which people are going to be working. And the idea that you're going to have one job and stay in that job or work for one company for a long time, that's no longer the reality. And so because this is a very sort of complex, very competitive, very fast moving type of, of world to live in and work in, what that means is that you've really got to be responsible for managing your own career. There isn't going to be one direct pathway. For example, if you wanted to work in nursing or engineering or um, even teaching, there's a direct pathway where you would become a social worker or a nurse or a teacher or a, a junior doctor, and then you would progress through the channels within let's say the NHS, and you would move up through the ranks in order to progress in your career. Well, if you wanna work in anything that's related to brands, marketing, social media, digital, um, any kind of promotion at all, you've really got to kind of think about how to manage your own career and manage your own pathway. And that's really great. It's really exciting because it gives you a lot of power. Uh, to do what you want to do and to follow your passions and to actually, uh, you know, make the life that you want out of out of your career. Um, but it's also really scary because it also means that you've got to hustle a lot and you've got to be really creative and you've got to be agile and you've got to be able to sort of roll with it and adapt um, to the changing environment. And you've got to constantly always be learning and promoting yourself. Um, and so there's a trade-off there. But for those young people who can learn how to be self-directed, so what that means is that if you can learn how to drive yourself forward and, uh, and see where you want to go and actually make the plan to get there without someone telling you what to do, it, that self-directed behavior is a really strong predictor of success. So someone who takes initiative and is actually able to go out and get what they want and go and put the steps in place, really strong. Also intrinsic motivation. What that means is that somebody who actually um, feels sort of that fire from within, they don't need someone to tell them what to do. They don't need to be um, constantly monitored. They're someone who's, who's hungry on their own. That's also a huge predictor of success. And then the final thing is, is that it does require a little bit of an entrepreneurial mindset. You do have to sort of think like a business person in order to be able to really succeed in this industry. So if you're someone who really just wants to clock in nine to five, Monday to Friday, having a set amount of guidelines to tell you what to do, um, and you just sort of do the same thing day in and day out, whatever your boss tells you to do, and then you clock out and you go home and you stop thinking about it, this isn't probably the career choice for you. But if you're someone who wants to be sort of passionate and engaged in what you do every day and really creative and applying yourself and constantly learning, constantly challenging yourself, and actually feel like you're making kind of an impact in the world in ways around um, informing people, educating people, selling them products that they want to buy, telling stories, um, doing creative work around images and color and design and photos and words, then this will be the career for you. But you need to think entrepreneurially about that. So what does that mean? Well, it basically means seeing yourself first and foremost as a brand. It basically means that you need to kind of see yourself as the product that you're going to be selling to your audiences, which could be your clients, could be your social media followers, and it could be your potential employers as well. And so if the more that you can start to see yourself as a 360 degree 3D 
product or object that might be sold online, especially, the more you're going to be able to actually figure out how to package that and how to actually sell yourself in a way that's actually going to get you results in terms of employment, clients, and also um, getting known, getting, getting out there and getting people to recognize you. So that's what we're going to talk about today is brand you. And the first thing before we even decide how to actually uh, package and sell your brand, the first thing you need to know is who you are. And, you know, one of the things that we teach at Middlesex that we're very, very passionate about is that we help to develop the whole student. We're not there just to kind of drill your head full of information that you then have to regurgitate in a test and then you graduate and you forget everything you ever learned. We in fact don't have any exams in our in our program whatsoever. There are none. What we do is we help you build your capacity to be the best person you can be. We're really interested in making sure that our graduates have built their character, have built their personality and really have a sense of who they are in the world because again, that intrinsic motivation, that self-determined behavior, those characteristics of being confident in who you are and knowing who you are is really going to help you define the kind of work you want to do and is therefore going to help you succeed as a professional later in life. So what you really need to start thinking about even now, well before you get to university or at any stage in your life, even me in my 40s, I'm constantly asking myself, who am I? What do I love? What works for me? Is that sort of self-awareness about why do you want to do this kind of work? What kind of life do you want to have? Um, and what you want to do is you really want to start to interrogate, you know, what kinds of activities do get you in flow, make you feel good. You know that moment where you're working on something or you're doing something and time just flies right by and you don't even know that it's happened other than you know doing something mindless perhaps um like playing video games or or um you know watching netflix or just scrolling through tiktok which i am guilty of doing um what kinds of activities that you're actively engaged in do can you be doing that you just lose track of time that's what help that's the a clue to what helps you get into flow and really think about really at this stage of your life think about you know, what is the best day? What kinds of things would I do in the best day? What kinds of things really fire me up and get me excited? Um, what does success feel like? You know, what, what gets me out of bed in the morning and makes me feel like life is worth living? Um, for me, I really enjoy talking to people and, and, and I enjoy um, being, you know, in a, in a big crowd of people. And for me, I loved events. I love festivals. I love going to raves and concerts and things like that. And so that was a real motivator for me to want to do that job at City Hall because I love being around people. I'm really good at talking about the things that I love. And I'm also um, would love concerts and festivals. So that was a good fit for me, for example. So ask yourself, you know, why do I want this? Why, what makes me fired up? And that gives you sort of, it starts to get you a sense of, you know, who you really are. And, and at the end of the day, you know, what is it that makes you unique? Because in advertising PR and branding, we talk a lot about the USP. And the USP is something that all products and all brands have to actually think about well before they do promotion, which is your unique selling proposition. That's the thing that makes you different than everyone else, that makes you stand out than everyone else. It's what makes your product stand out from the competition. It's what makes an author or a musician or a politician stand out from their competition. And it's something that all people working in branding really have to grapple with. So if you're thinking about your own self-brand, why not first think about, well, what makes me unique? What is it that makes me special? And again, that comes back to establishing a level of self-awareness. So once you've kind of done some journaling exercises, maybe you've done some personality tests, maybe you've watched some YouTube videos that help you kind of think about who you are and what you want out of life, I would highly recommend spending your summer doing some workbooks and some journaling and some uh, exercises to kind of get to know yourself. There's lots and lots of stuff out there to really kind of get a sense of who you are and what you want to do with your life. Establish your professional direction or at least a thought of what maybe what you'd like to do. And then, and then start 
your self-branding process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through sort of an eight or nine step approach now that once you know what, who you are and what you wanna do, even if it changes and it will change, believe me, at least it gives you a starting point to follow these then eight steps to actually be the self-brand that you need to be in order to stand out from the competition. The first thing you need to do is analyze the competition. You need to know who else is out there that is going to be vying for the same kinds of jobs and clients that you might be going for. Um, and you need to know what the landscape looks like. So if you're not already, I would highly, highly recommend, in fact, I would implore you to get familiar with LinkedIn, create your profile, you will be using it while you're at university, and we will be, uh, there will be opportunities for you to help grow and establish your profile on LinkedIn while you study with us. You also want to research your industry and research the type of jobs. What I would recommend is, is start adding in some search functions and keywords on LinkedIn where they will send you the job adverts on a regular basis. Because again, one of the things you need to do is you need to see what kind of jobs are out there so that you can start to tailor your skills and expertise to actually fit those jobs. And that's one of the things we do in first years. We actually look in our PR class, we will actually look at PR jobs on LinkedIn and we will use them to analyze exactly the skills that you plan on establishing and building for yourself throughout your university um, studies with us. I would also recommend using Twitter to your benefit. Um, search on Twitter for like-minded people, people who are using hashtags, who are writing about things that you're interested in. And you can use all kinds of tools like Follower Wonk, Tracker, Buzzsumo to find who the key players in certain industries are. And I would recommend making sure that you follow them and you would start to engage with the kind of content that they're sharing because they are going to be speaking a language that might be not familiar to you at first, but you want to be familiar with it by the time you graduate. The longer chance you have of being part of these conversations online, the better you'll have to be equipped. I would also recommend that you participate. Okay, there's loads and loads of opportunities in real life and online for you to attend conferences, public lectures, roundtables, um, there's a website called meetup.com where you can literally just go on there and meet strangers um, doing activities that you love. And that's a great way to make some connections as well as get yourself out there a little bit more. And obviously there's loads of Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, there's Twitter chats, there's all kinds of areas where people are having conversations about areas that you might be interested in. And it's really good for you to get to know who the players are and get to know that the language they speak. And again, the sooner you start to actually engage on those groups and follow them and then start to even post, the better uh, equipped you'll be to actually move forward in your self-branding journey. The second thing you want to do is you want to refine your image. So we're all on social. We've all been on social for a long time. And you guys especially have lived most of your lives on social. Um, and it's a really important thing to make sure that your social image is refined to reflect the professional direction you're about to go in as a university student and as a future professional. Now, you can do it however you want, but what I would recommend is that you would uh, reserve certain platforms for personal use only, and then reserve other platforms for professional use. So for example, my Facebook is really my friends and family, and I share my personal stories, but on Twitter and LinkedIn, I post um, under my full real name, and I also post um, content that's related to my career. Um, you want to make sure that you are uh, locked down completely on your privacy settings, especially on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, you want to make sure that you are deleting anything from your past that could be seen as incriminating, outdated, uh, or anything that you don't think reflects the best part of you. Um, this is absolutely necessary. 95% of employers uh, look at your social media profiles uh, and they will search for you on Google. And, uh, and that's how once they see your CV before they interview you, they will Google you and they will look through your socials. So it's a really good idea just to make sure that those are either locked down or cleaned up. <laughs> so either have them completely uh, private and only available to the people that you manage and you want to, them to see, or if you have a more public profile, make sure that there's nothing on there that you would be embarrassed to tell your boss about.
Um, make sure you check images under your name when, when you Google, because again, there's lots of chances where people might have tagged you in something that you don't know about, and you want to make sure that you're, there's no um, unflattering images of you online. And you want to make sure that you are updating your LinkedIn profile often, and you're engaging in that platform. And I would also recommend, you know, getting a friend or investing in a decent headshot, because as you start to get yourself out there a little bit more, you're going to want to have a nice picture of yourself that, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, that reflects the way that you want to be seen. Okay, so <coughs> lock down your image, make sure it's refined, and make sure you know exactly how you're being perceived if anyone were to search for you on any of the platforms. Once you've kind of managed how you're perceived, now you want to actually try to be as discoverable as possible. And so what that means is that you want to make sure that your profiles, whether that's you, whether you've decided, let's say, for example, that your Twitter and your LinkedIn profile are going to be your most professional ones, potentially even your Instagram um, or even your TikTok, depending on the kind of businesses. <coughs> And depending on how you're branding yourself and how you're promoting who you are, you want to make sure that those profiles are overhauled and that they are consistent with each other. Most of what makes branding work from a product perspective or a, a package perspective, branding works because it's consistent, because it gives the user, the audience, a consistent experience. And that's why they still develop what we call a brand loyalty, because they feel an emotional connection to that brand. And that it, it, it gives them a consistent something that they can count on. And so that consistency is really important when it comes to your own self profile, your profiles on, on social as well. For professional uses, you want to make sure you use your real and full name, because this is, again, how you will be uh, promoted on your CV and on your LinkedIn, and it all has to be consistent. Um, you also want to look for opportunities for you to actually get out there more. So if you're already posting on Twitter or LinkedIn, for example, you might want to look for writing opportunities where you can write about the thing that you're passionate about or write about what you're learning in your studies or write about, you know, your favorite band, <laughs> whatever you want to write about, just write. Um, <clears throat> and you can write intelligent and authentic posts on places like Quora, LinkedIn, and Medium to start a conversation. And again, especially in this industry, when where content creation is such a vital aspect of the job, um, they, employers are going to be looking to see if you're actually creating content. They want to know whether you're actually writing up um, blog posts or on Medium, or even if you're, you know, producing and creating intelligent uh, snips on TikTok, um, <clears throat> or they want to look at how you position even the, the writing and the tags on the captions on Instagram, um, you know, they read those things and they want to see that you're actually uh, writing in a way that is engaging for the audiences. So, Another good thing that you really can do right away, and I would recommend everyone do this, is to buy your own domain name. Um, it's uh, not that expensive, probably about 10 pounds a year, and you can uh, buy your own domain name and you can house your blog there if you want. At the very least, you can start with a, a series of, of um, links to portfolio work that you've done. You can put your CV on that site. You can show illustrations or other types of things that you've been doing. You can actually even post your school work if you think that that your, your projects, that if you think that's going to be authentic. Anything that is that you're creating, you can post on your own website. And um, <clears throat> again, having your own domain name is just a really important first start in terms of people being able to discover you if they're ever trying to find you. And you can always look for opportunities to speak at different events. Again, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be high level, but anytime anyone asks you to participate, just say yes and offer and look for any opportunities where you can actually get your name out there and start talking to people. 
You also want to make sure that you label any files that you put on your website with um, special, specific keywords <clears throat> and meta tags, which will allow those things to be readily searched and available. And ultimately, what you want at the end of the day is to be what we call SEO friendly. And again, this is something that we teach a lot in our course for, um, for students who are going to be working on brands is how do you work with SEO? For those of you who don't meet, know what that means, it means search engine optimization. <clears throat> Basically, how do you get to the top of Google? How do you get your product, your brand, so that when someone searches for you, how does it actually get to the top of the search? And how does it, uh, how, what kind of profile does it have online? <clears throat> and the same applies to you. You want to be search engine optimization friendly so that when anyone Googles your name, they find you and all of the wonderful things that you've written and posted about that are on brand. So next we're going to move on to networking because this is always an area where students especially are very terrified and they're worried and they, they know they have to do it, but they're not sure how. Again, it's part of our program. We do spend a lot of time with students actually helping them. <clears throat> not only do we offer opportunities for networking, so we have a lot of events where we have alumni who have studied with us previously. They will come in and they will talk to current students. Um, we will also, we also have a series of um, of speaker series where we bring in top industry professionals to do panel discussions about certain aspects of the industry and they talk directly to students and most of those panels have made themselves readily available to our students through LinkedIn and they help to mentor them. Um, <clears throat> we offer a lot of opportunities to learn how to network as well as to just get better at it. And the thing about networking is at the end of the day it's really just about building relationships. It's just about making connections with people and playing the long game in terms of just building a, a portfolio of people that you like and trust and who trust and like you. It's not about going to events and sticking your business card into everybody's hand who will take it. Um, it's literally about active listening, finding out what things people are up to, um, <clears throat> listening to their stories, trying to get to know them a little bit better being delightful, being someone who people like to be around, um, and then looking for opportunities for you to uh, build better connections to work together. So, um, you know, that's essentially you know, what networking is. And then it's about keeping in touch with those people on a regular basis by providing value. So it's not always about you and what you want. It's mostly about what other people want and who they are. And the more you can be valuable to them by being a good listener and by being someone who offers, you know, good quality content and shares things and shares insights, um, the better networker you will be. Okay. <clears throat> um, next, we move on to your actual CV. Now, with a CV, everyone has to have one. They are required to start to, to get jobs. And we do work very closely with our students on helping them develop their CV while they're studying with us. And also we have a, an organization called MDX Works where you get one-on-one -on -one support with an advisor who will literally help you work through every aspect of your CV and will help you see that all of the jobs you've had, whether that's babysitting, working in retail, working at a coffee shop, uh, in a restaurant, or um, anything else, you know, can be tailored to um, make your CV really stand out with the transferable skills that you want to highlight that you have. You obviously want to make sure that your CV is sort of long enough to make sure that it covers all the information, but it's short enough to keep people interested. We do know that employers will spend an average of five to seven seconds looking at a CV. So it has to be clean and clear and says the information in a really succinct way to be sort of put in the potential pile versus the rubbish pile. We will also help uh, teach you about the difference between a chronological CV versus a skills-based CV, and you can decide which one is best for you and how to actually tailor it. You might even decide to create both. And <clears throat> a lot of what really makes a CV stand out is the value and the quality of your personal statement. Um, and so, you know, a lot of that in terms of how you describe yourself and how you describe the, the past jobs and employment that you've had is really about your ability to offer 
what we call is a so what factor. The so what factor is why should I care about you? <laughs> why should what why is this information important? And you will come across this all the time when we talk about in the degree things like features and benefits when you're trying to sell a product. Every consumer and every audience is interested in the so what. So, you know, what was the outcome? Why does it matter? Why was this significant? How did this lead to this? Why is this important? Why should I care? So these are the, this is we're going to help teach you how to position your CV in a way that will sort of really make the so what factor stand out, and also will be you know re clean and readable and, and applicable to various industries that you want to work in. Um, just as a hint um, that I hope that you will take with you forever is that whenever you are doing anything that's going to be seen by employers, for the love of God, don't have any typos on there. Um, have, check it, check it again, check it again, have someone else check it, uh, run it through a spell checker and then check it again, uh, because typos and spelling mistakes will eliminate you from the competition especially in this industry. We take these things very seriously and it just shows that you are being professional and detail oriented. <clears throat> so you've gone through all of this stage where you, uh, you know who you are, you know what you want out of your life or at least the, a, a general direction that you wanna go in. You've cleaned up your social profiles, you're engaging online with people, you're following the right people. You've gone to a couple of events and you've made some friends and you're starting to build your network. Um, you've got a clean CV that's ready to go in case anyone ever says, great, send me your CV. Um, and you are ready for the interview. <clears throat> and so, and this is, you know, obviously what happens when you get a chance to actually get in front of someone and pitch yourself to them. This is a chance to practice your pitch and practice your self-branding story about who you are and what you want out of life. And I will tell you in every single job interview I've ever had and every job I've, I've worked with hundreds of people who have interviewed uh, potential employees, the first question they'll ask is, tell us a little bit about yourself. And this is a chance to practice your elevator pitch. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the elevator pitch in a minute. Um, but this is your chance to really make your star shine. Now, a little secret about answering interview questions is that every question is an opportunity to be a star. And what you want to do is you want to position yourself as the central solution to the problem. Um, you, you, what you want to do is every time a question is asked, you want to sort of set up the problem and, you know, tell the, the interviewer what kind of things you did to help solve the problem and then show the outcome of that solution. Um, but the whole point of the story is to position yourself as the star of the story. So you set the scene, you talk about a situation, that happened, you define the purpose or the tasks that needed to happen, you explain what you did and you go through the actions and then you share the outcome in terms of a result. Um, <clears throat> if you can take one thing away from this entire talk today, it's that if you can start to learn how to answer interview questions in this way, you will guaranteed make a very strong and positive impression on anyone who's interviewing you. And it really helps to bring to life some of the issues, like some of the ways in which you will add value to a team, no matter what kind of role that is. So think about the STAR method every time you're in an interview. Let's talk a little bit more about the elevator pitch. So the elevator pitch is basically something that you will use for the rest of your life. And it's a very, very powerful tool that basically is a brief persuasive speech that you use simply to spark interest. It's not an opportunity to tell someone your life story. It's not the, the time to bombard them with all the facts and information about yourself. It's a quick synopsis of your background, your experience, as well as your future goals. And the reason we call it an elevator pitch is essentially the idea that if you were to go into, say, one of the high rise towers down at the city and you got in at the ground floor and all of a sudden you found out you were next to the CEO of the company that you're dying to work for, you basically have as much time from when the elevator goes from the or the lift, sorry, goes from the ground floor to the top floor to pitch that CEO why he or she should care about you and why they would might want to know a little bit more about you. 
So, and as I said, an elevator pitch is an essential tool that you will use for the rest of your life. And it will change over time, but the sooner you can get used to learning how to tell your story in 30 to 90 seconds, the sooner you're going to be able to network effectively, interview effectively, and also make more friends effectively as well. Because the elevator pitch is used everywhere. So again, if you go right back to that initial sort of exercise around thinking about who you are and thinking about what your USP is, you need to start thinking about the kinds of words and the stories that you want to tell about yourself that tells your story in a short and a succinct way. That story then becomes your Twitter profile, your LinkedIn bio, it becomes the personal summary at the top of your CV, it becomes the opening in a job interview when someone says, tell me about yourself. It's something that you would use if you were going to career fairs and actually meeting potential employers, and it definitely happens when you're meeting new friends. It can happen when you're sitting around the dinner table and maybe your parents have invited their friends over for dinner, or maybe you're having a family barbecue or a family reunion and an aunt or an uncle that you don't know very well says, so what are you up to these days? It happens when you're meeting friends in clubs and bars. It happens when you're um, when you're out at a picnic and you're sitting down and you're meeting friends of other friends. Everyone kind of wants to know a little bit about you. And the sooner you can learn how to tell a, an interesting and engaging story about who you are and where you want to go in your life, the sooner you're going to be able to actually make a big difference. Now, it doesn't have to be highly complicated and you don't even have to have a lot of experience to be able to have a really strong elevator pitch. If you look at these examples, these are examples of students who are simply passionate about certain areas and they're applying themselves into things that they wanna do. So I recently graduated with a degree in communications. I worked as a, at the, on the college newspaper as a reporter and eventually as the editor of the arts section. I loved creating content about bands, musicians, and concerts, and I'm looking for a job that will put my skills as a journalist to work. This tells me that this person is highly motivated, that, they're, um, that they have taken initiative and they go and they apply themselves into volunteer things like the college newspaper. It tells me that they're passionate about something, that they know a lot about music and bands and concerts. And it tells me that they're hungry for more work and that, that they're interested in actually learning and growing. That's a lot to get from someone after only about 50 words. Likewise, the second one, I have a background in graphic design. I've been practicing at home for years, creating illustrations for websites. My passion is coming up with creative ways to express a message and drawing illustrations that people share on social media. I'd love an opportunity where I can enhance my design skills in various media and for different brands. Again, this person doesn't necessarily have any education. They're just doing graphic design at home. But again, that tells me that they have internal motivation, that they take initiative, that they have a passion, and that they are actually engaged in social and they know how that works because they're actually able to get people to share their content. Um, And it also tells me that they're hungry to learn more and apply themselves. So you don't have to have a ton of experience and a ton of, of, uh, of achievements behind your belt or under your belt before you actually come up with an elevator pitch that works. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna build a message map for your elevator pitch. You wanna think about, you know, a little bit about who am I, you know, what, who was I in the past? Who am I in the present? And who do I want to be in the future? And you come up with sort of three kind of key messages that you sort of think you, that people will be most interested in. And then you build it with supporting points. Now, just sitting down with a piece of paper and working on this as sort of a mind map is a really useful exercise. But again, there are lots and lots of YouTube videos that will help you build the perfect elevator pitch. And if you write elevator pitch message map, et cetera, um, you know, or just how to how to write an elevator pitch, um, you will be able to come up with lots of ways to learn how to do that effectively. But there are templates to help build you, guide you through the process. And, you know, the thing that you want to do is, again, you want to come back to that unique selling proposition, your unique story or perspective. What is it that makes you stand out? 
usually what I say is that this is going to be a combination of your skills and your passions. So you want to think about, okay, what skills do I have that are transferable? Graphic design, working with people, leading a team, working independently, working to deadlines, detail oriented, um, you know, all of those things are, real, are things that are really high in demand. Um, so those are skills that you can acquire in any kind of job. What you want to do then is try to apply those transferable skills to something that might be really passionate for you, whether that's photography, music, animals, uh, the environment, climate change, um, fashion, beauty, you know, whatever sort of areas you're really passionate in, it's the combination of your skills with your passions that really start to bring your elevator pitch to life. You kind of want to be able to write something that's going to be short enough that says, you know, this is my name, this is where I come from, this is who I am right now, and this is where I want to go in future. Um, and by identifying kind of where you want to go in future, what you want to do is you want to start to kind of identify a gap. And why that gap is important is because it gives something, somebody else, something to work with. So when you're meeting someone and you say, I'm, I'm hoping to land a job in this area, but I don't yet have any connections, or I'm, I'm really like to build my skills in this particular area, but I'm not sure where to start. By identifying a gap, it allows that person you're talking to to say, hey, I know someone you should speak to, or hey, I have experience in this, or I just read a pod, I just read a book, or I just heard a podcast, something that allows them to kind of connect with what you're saying and then offer value to you and information. Likewise, look for the gap in what other people are saying, because it allows you to insert something to help them. And that is what makes the most effective networking. So again, think about, you know, sit down after this talk today and think about your five and five, you know, write down your educational experience, your work experience, write down a list of the things you're passionate about, identify the gap or like what you might be missing or what you might need, and then identify a three to five year plan or a future goal about where you'd like to see yourself. And if you start even with these five, act five steps and these five activities, you will start to see your elevator pitch really start to come to life. And then practice it, practice, 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 stand in front of the mirror, Go on Zoom and record yourself delivering your, your pitch. Give it to your friends. Ask them to give you theirs back. Practice it as much as you can. Every time you actually see your parents' friends or new friends or old friends you haven't seen in a while or you're meeting anyone for the first time, practice your pitch because it will, it'll get easier. It'll roll off your tongue um, so easily you won't even know you're doing it. And you will also figure out where to refine it and where it has the biggest impact on your audience. And that's ultimately what branding is all about, is that sort of constant kind of understanding who you are, what you want out of life, where you're going, packaging it in a way that's actually going to be accessible to the people that you're talking to, and actually putting it out there in front of an audience that's going to matter so that you can actually convert that into a career and a job that you love in the end. And at the end of the day, you know, if you want to work in this industry and if you're interested in doing anything creative at all, you've got to take responsibility for your own future. No one's going to hand it to you on a silver platter. Um, but at Middlesex, we definitely take a high interest. We, we really pride ourselves on helping you figure all of this out. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time you graduate, you will have your own website with your own complete portfolio of, of um, projects and creative pro and creative content, etc. that will be available. You can't graduate without it. You'll have your CV, your LinkedIn profile. You'll probably have had a couple of internships at that point that will add to your experience. Um, but the most important thing is you'll probably have a big bigger, stronger, more confident sense of yourself and the and you'll be a lot more confident in, in terms of actually getting out there and um, and putting yourself out there as a brand that is worthy of good employment or good business and and uh, and a success in future. So this is where you can find me, um, Twitter uh, or LinkedIn, you can find me there or you can email me as well. And uh, with that, I will uh, close down the presentation and 
ask if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask. We've got about 10, 15 minutes, and I'm very, very happy if you want to put your questions into the chat. Um, I am totally fine to, um, to answer them from there. Don't be shy, I am here. Um, the chat is probably the best place. I don't think you could actually do a, a, an actual recorded or speaking. Um, sure, I can, Anjali is asking if I can put my contact details slide again, absolutely. So again, if you just Googled Janina Warren, it, you'd be able to find my website, JaninaWarren.com, which directs you to uh, my consulting website, which is GeForceConsulting.co.uk. Uh, but JaninaWarren.com will take you to, um, to my personal site. And on Twitter, I'm Dr. Underscore G Warren. So someone asked, that's a very good question. How important are cover letters? Very important, um, extremely important, in fact. Um, now, usually cover letters will uh, be used as, for example, um, in the body of an email that you send your CV. Um, it, the cover letter is essentially your elevator pitch, but in written format. But it's also, more importantly, it's the chance to show that you've done your research on your employer on your potential employer. So what you wanna do is you wanna take the elements from your elevator pitch and expand them a little bit more in the cover letter, but you also wanna make sure that you've written the cover letter in a way that directly relates to the, the place that you're applying to. Um, employers don't like to see generic cover letters that are just spammed out to everyone. They want to know that you've actually done the research, that you care about the company, that you'll actually add value. So it's your chance to kind of bring to life a few extra elements about your past or extra elements about your, your story that maybe are not clear in the CV um, and actually add a little bit of color, add a little bit of depth. Um, so the cover letter is, is very, very important. I would say I don't know anyone who doesn't include that as a requirement when you're applying. And even if they don't include it as a requirement, you want to have it in the body of your email where your cover, where your CV is attached. Um, Benjamin Elliott Goldie asks, uh, is getting work experience in the media industries important before applying to this course? Absolutely not. Um, you can come to the to this course without any work experience whatsoever. In fact, we assume that our students don't have any work experience yet uh, in first year. So, um, you know, obviously in first year, a lot of the stuff that we teach is going to be foundational and um, we will give you a good sort of basis for being able to get your first internship in the media industries. So in first year, you will study content design, which is, ad, which is graphic design. So you'll get a lot of experience on Photoshop, InDesign, um, and, and the other, and you know, Adobe Premiere and the other sort of tools that you'll need. You'll take first year public relations, which will help teach you how PR works and how to write for PR and how to actually create a port PR portfolio. You'll take creative advertising, which actually gets you started on thinking creatively and thinking, coming up with concepts for brands and ads. And then you'll take another course called Brands, Media and Society, which gives you a really good overview of how brands operate in the world and what are some of the big picture issues you need to think about as well as it'll introduce you to how to study at university so you can see that there's not really any requirement that you come with preloaded experience you can uh, you come as you are and as long as you're willing to get stuck in right away get creative you know think outside the box and just start practicing you'll be totally fine uh, Sophia Perez asks, what if I'm planning to work in a specific company temporarily? How should the cover letter be written? Um, that's a pretty specific question that it's hard to answer. But if you, if, if you just want to work for the short term and you think you just, you're going to be quitting after a few months, don't, don't say that in the cover letter. Um, just act as if you would be working there, you know, 
forever or for as long as it, it, you, nobody required, nobody expects anyone to work anywhere forever now, but um, you know, you would write the cover letter the same way as if you were applying for any job. Um, you want to make the cover letter as specific to that company as possible. And you want to highlight your particular skills and uh, your particular assets and the, and, and even your passions. And, you know, again, the cover letter is a chance for you to add a little bit more color to your story that the CV is not going to say. So if you have things that are directly related to that company, um, then definitely, or even that that company might want, then definitely highlight in that in that cover letter. Anybody else have any questions? I'd love to know if you found this useful, if, if there is anything that I talked about that really stood out for you. I'd really love to see your comments um, in terms of, uh, you know, something that you learned today or something that stood out for you as, uh, as particularly interesting or maybe even something that you'll use right away in your future self-branding. Um, someone else asked, um, do we beef up our CVs? COVID has robbed most of us of work experience opportunities. Yeah, I get it. It's been rough out there, definitely. Um, but don't beef up your CV. If you mean by lie or, or be false or be untruthful, no. But you could... If, but by beefing up, if you mean reflecting on some of the adjacent experiences that you've had um, and, and actually, um, you know, positioning them in a way that actually makes it sound like you've got skills, then absolutely. And, and MDX Works really helps you do that. What, and we, in various courses that you'll be taking with us, we also help you do that because we get it. Not everyone has work experience or maybe your work experience is McDonald's and you've worked there for two years and that's all you've done or you've worked babysitting or, you know, there's, but there's lots of ways that you can take the skills that you developed in those jobs and you can make them stand out for a media industry career and again there's a lot of ways even in terms of your studies even in terms of your you know at school things like working on a team together meeting deadlines project management um allocating responsibility to people um you know working on complex problems solving problems you know all of those things that you could probably if you look at your current experience even if it's volunteer experience even if it's school experience and not work related there's lots of ways that you can look at those types of skills and you can actually position yourself as somebody who's ready for a career in the media industries and then once you start uni volunteer for as many things as you can. Um, and I often tell our students now, you know, if you fancy yourself as someone who wants to work in this industry, start now. If you have an uncle with a restaurant, or if you have a friend who's in a band, or you have a friend who's a photographer and then want to get their photos out there, or if you, you know, even if your hairdresser is struggling and they need some help with, you know, developing their own brand, offer to help. Create a brand for, for, for a friend, create a flyer for a local business, go online and create a social media um, a profile for a small business that doesn't have it. Every company in the world needs this type of, needs promotion. <laughs> and people, if you're minded that way, if you have those skills, you can do it as a volunteer, but then those things become part of your portfolio and you can put them on your CV. So, you know, I have a lot of students who are out there constantly just creating flyers for restaurants or creating, you know, uh, social media campaigns for a friend who's in a band or creating YouTube videos for, you know, for, for friends, etc. Create content, even for free, just create it to be that will beef up your CV uh, more than anything else. Um, and yes, if you've got further questions, you can absolutely contact me, um, you know, Twitter direct message is fine, uh, or on LinkedIn, you can find me, and you can always email me as well. Thank you, Anita. I'm happy that it was useful to you.
we've just got one or two minutes left. I'm happy to answer any other questions or if anyone's got any other comments about anything that they learned today or that was very useful to them. I also really um, enjoy feedback as well. Okay, well, um, thank you for your time today. Hopefully you have been inspired to go out there and start writing your elevator pitch and practicing it. And at, at the very least, hopefully you've been inspired just to get to know yourself a little bit better and to do some personal work this summer while you start to think about your future and start thinking about the kind of life that you wanna lead and, and live. And hopefully you will, you know, make the world a better place by doing that. And I sincerely hope that we'll be able to see you at Middlesex as well um, for a future uh, BA advertising, PR and branding. And um, uh, I've just got a last question. I want to start my own company. How should I first start the first key steps? Well, the first key steps is that you would take your, B your BA in advertising, PR and branding, and then you would take our final year entrepreneurship module, <laughs> which will give you the absolute, it'll take 24 weeks and I don't have time now, but over 24 weeks, we will absolutely guide you step-by-step step through the process in terms of um, creating your business idea, creating your business plan, identifying your key customers, doing your profit and loss statement, identifying your funding and, uh, and then actually marketing it and getting it out there to people. So those are the first key steps to building a business. Um, but certainly our entrepreneurship course in, in the final year will will you you'll graduate with your business plan in hand ready to go um, as well as we do have some uh, startup funding opportunities potential we've had other students in the past win you know startup funding from mdx works to start their own businesses and a lot of our students have graduated with a business plan and an online portfolio of their of their website ready to hit the market. So hopefully that will also be you in a couple of years. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I hope to see you again on our campus, um, whether that's uh, next year or the year after, whenever you're planning on joining us. And uh, certainly look forward to hearing from you if you have any further questions. Thanks so much. Have a great day.